like I said, maybe I'm in the minority, but I do think it's great that he's one of the only people out there talking about health and fitness. I think it's important when it comes to COVID because people don't want to speak about it. I know maybe it's in poor taste. You don't want to talk about somebody's weight after they just pass away, right? Because, you know, who does that kind of thing? But it is important to talk about that, you know, it is disproportionately affecting people who are obese, who are obviously not healthy, who have pre-existing conditions or pre-existing health conditions that maybe could be alleviated prior to maybe COVID being around or whatever it is. So that's definitely a conversation that needs to be had. But it's just the arrogance that this guy had prior that's just really, really hilarious, right? So um, let's play a little clip of Joe Brogan talking to Dr. Rhonda Patrick on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, right? And he's being a bit of a cunt. And this clip, again, is, is highly edited and clipped up to make it seem like um, he's cutting Ronda Patrick off a lot, but he's not. They just cut it to make it look like he is. But essentially, this is the gist of the interview, where he's basically trying to push anecdotal evidence towards, you know, somebody who, you know, claims to be a doctor in an effort to kind of, you know, uh, speak his piece about it. So I'm going to play it now. It's from Reddit. So hopefully they won't take me down for it. But let's play um, Joe Rogan you know talking about <laughs> the pandemic talking about sorry um his anecdotal evidence when it comes in the face of somebody i wonder patrick talking about the vaccine so let's hear what he has to say do you think the vaccines are harmful to anyone well of course i mean do you know anyone that's had bad reactions to vaccines I pr- you would feel differently if you knew someone that had, had a stroke or someone who's had heart attacks perhaps young people that have well I, it's hard to say. I think the last I saw it was like 50 per million, which it's still rare. And it's... It's happened to two people that I know. It, 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 so, you know. Do you know anybody that had COVID and got through it with almost no symptoms at all and was very mild? Um, well, yeah, no symptoms. You don't yeah, know anybody I, that didn't have that? Um, <laughs> I don't because most of the people I know... There was a couple of days where everybody around me got it and a couple of days of my workouts felt really shitty. And I just took it real easy and I continued the same stuff that I always do in terms of my protocol, like with the sauna and all the other stuff that I do and vitamins and supplementation and uh, my whole. I guess vitamin D didn't stop it in it. Vitamin D, saunas, cold baths and all that nonsense. That's probably why he was pushing it so much, right? He might have even felt groggy back then. Maybe he had bits and pieces of, you know, maybe it was a kind of premonition. Remember when he was doing all those really weird videos where he was challenging himself to conquer his inner bitch on Instagram. Again, don't get me wrong. I love the guy, but, you know, some of that stuff is so cringe. But again, he's American and they they have a different sort of temperament when it comes to that kind of stuff. And, you know, he's probably bored at home, nothing to do. So I get it. Family got it. I never got it. Well, but now, also people that have had natural infections and then have the vaccine have a much higher likelihood of getting an adverse side effect. Do they? Yes. I don't. A good friend of mine who's an elite athlete. <laughs> Do got they? Infected yes. Infected with COVID, it was nothing. Mm. He breezed through it, and then he got vaccinated. And he was wrecked for eleven days. Again, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's just. Imagine inviting Rhonda Patrick on your show and asking her about COVID and stuff and, you know, having wider a conversation around it and then just bombarding her with all your stories about your friends. Like, most of which are flipping comedians who just didn't take it seriously enough. Brendan Shaw being a big example of it, right? He didn't, he, he thought it was a, you know, it was a joke. You know, why it was, wasn't a big deal, didn't affect no one, what's the point of lockdowns? Goes to do his shitty shows and ends up catching it. And then pretends like he's not the one that spread it to his entire crew, and then goes and then continue and then I think when he got it, he didn't even quarantine. He just continued riding his bike and going outside, still like just an absolute nun nuts in it of a situation. But let's go back to the article and hear what New York Times say because I'm sure they're going to be super happy that he got it right, which is really really it's funny. Um, but the New York Times, as I say, the following. Let's scroll down. The New York Times say he took coronavirus tests the next morning that came back positive, he said, and it's unclear if he has been vaccinated against COVID. But in an episode of his podcast in April, he mentioned that children had experienced mild COVID symptoms early in the year or in the pandemic. So in this video on Wednesday, no, let's skip ahead. We said that um, the list of treatments he mentioned, um, monocle antibodies, which have been shown to protect COVID patients oops, um, at risk of becoming ill and predestinone. Um, a steroid we widely accepted as a COVID treatment. When Donald Trump was stricken with the COVID during the presidency, he was also treated with monoclonal antibodies. Oh, the Donald Trump thing is a good example because if I'm not mistaken, do you remember when Trump got COVID? 
wasn't I, am I incorrect in saying that some doctors came out or somebody leaked news that if he wasn't the president, um, that most likely he would have passed away because of how seriously it hit him. But because he was able to have, you know, some of the best doctors in the world attending to him with some of the, you know, uh, cutting edge, you know, medicines in order to kind of get him better. He recovered in record time because of that. But it really did affect him badly because, of course, you know, he's severely overweight, doesn't work out, doesn't believe in working out and eats McDonald's every day. So it did make some sense. So all this stuff that Rogan's boasting about is stuff that's not accessible to the regular person on the street. Same way when it happened to Donald Trump. So when those guys are talking about, you know, people should be free to live their lives and not wear a mask, it's like, yeah, it's all right for everybody else because it's all right for you because you don't have to work in Walmart, right? You don't have to go to the construction site. You don't have to go to the schools and whatever. It's a local town halls and be inter interacting with people. You can just basically isolate yourself in your bubble, go to your little private golf clubs and member clubs in general and live a life of you know pampering and luxury without being exposed to real average everyday people i definitely understand the frustration in that one and it continues there says mr rogan also said that he recovered received sorry he received a vitamin drip as well as um how, however you say that word ever everse evermesetine is that you said evermesetine a drug primarily used as a veterinary deworming agent um the food drug administration has warned covid19 patients against taking the drug and has repeatedly been shown as ineffective from them in clinical trials however it is a popular subject on facebook reddit and among conservative talk show hosts and some toxicologists have warned to surgery reports of overexposure to the drug by those who obtain it from livestock supplies stores so people honestly human beings are mad people would much rather buy this either either mestine from the dark web right right or from horse flipping uh lives or from livestock supply stores instead of just taking the vaccine because they're afraid the vaccine might do what to them might make their hair fall out might make them grow a flipping 5g antenna in the back of their backs like honestly human beings never cease to amaze me it's just amazing the things that we kind of get hung up on the same way how you know some of my kind of drug addict friends who go out on the weekend and do you know flipping lines of coke every weekend and party are the ones who are really adamant against taking the vaccine it's like dude where do you think your cocaine comes from do you think your cocaine is like you know um what's that thing called uh there is no such thing as fair trade class a drugs you know what i mean your stuff is coming literally off the backs of migrants do you know what i mean it's your your stuff that's had to come in your little baggie has probably cost the lives of many different people people have probably gone fatherless because of you wanting your little gram to go out on a night out but then those people are very hesitant to take the vaccine i don't really know what's about Maybe it's cognitive dissonance. I'm not too sure what it is, but that's just interesting to see people legitimately buying medicine or what they claim to be medicine from a horse supply store, from a livestock supply store and being okay with it. It's just wild. It says here, Mr. Rogan was traveling nationally with his Rogan, the sacred, the sacred clown tour. He was scheduled to perform a show in the comedian David Chappelle in Nashville, Tennessee on February, but said his video on Wednesday that he was postponed to October. His podcast is effectively a series of wandering conversations, often over weekly, over whiskey and weed, sorry, on topics. Da, da, da. The show is less, is, was licensed by spotify last year for an estimated 100 million dollar deal his comments on the show in the spring undermining the value of the vaccinations for young healthy people due combination from the bad administration of prince harry another pods what prince harry you know fuck prince harry but again i don't mind it um i don't mind it it continues here mr rogan has offered refunds to fans who bought tickets to an upcoming show uh, Mr. Rogan said on his new podcast last week that 30,000 tickets to the show had already been sold out, but because he opposed his vaccine requirements, he would offer refunds. Holy shit. If someone has an ideological or physical reason for not getting vaccinated, I don't want to force them to get vaccinated to see the show. And now they and now they say that everybody has to be vaccinated. And I want everyone to know that you can get your money back. Interested to know. That's what I want to know. I want to know if he's going to change his stance on that sort of stuff. Do you think he's going to once he recovers or if he if he runs into some difficulty recovering or do you think he's ever going to change his position like this where he's going to require his fans that do come to go watch him when he goes on tour and does his comedy specials so he does his comedy tours with um, Dave Chappelle or if he want people to get vaccinated I don't know because from what I remember Dave Chappelle shows that he did during the entire pandemic he was doing them more so outdoors to get people to have fun and shit right so in order for people to go out and 
still see a show and for him to perform he do these shows outdoors because the thinking was at that time you couldn't catch covid outdoors because the air and whatnot bloody blah airborne virus obviously maybe that stuff has maybe changed so since then but it was never billed as like a i want everyone to come so i'm doing outdoors tours more so because of the current restrictions and because we can't do the tour indoors in a normal comedy club or an arena we're gonna do them in these fields and have you wear a mask sort of like you know in just a gesture just a kind of a performative thing so then we can just do whatever we want to do um but i wonder will joe change his stance on that will he change his stance probably not i doubt it i doubt that's going to happen um somebody that's in this position is probably going to just figure out a way of making it work for him and he's probably you know i don't know <laughs> i don't know i really don't know let's go to the chat and see what people are saying here joe's so arrogant sometimes with his guests that he actually know um what they're talking about very true says Antine machado um a person called Sef uh, sephiroth says i don't know the level of capitalism and uncompetentness in the part is what makes opportunities in country that the u.s brilliant and powerful however by balance also makes us evil he says i personally never tell people otherwise i'm an exception here clearly and i personally content with my own part of countless sacrifices sebastian says he for sure do not have to worry about the public transportation either he says just ask my louis vuitton tracksuit how much i'm wearing type this 6k Cool. What is this? Oh, I don't know. Um, um, someone, Sebastian, said, I don't think he will change his position. He will just say, I got COVID, felt bad for one day, and that was it. Yeah, that's what's probably going to happen. I, I hope it doesn't. I hope he's really honest about his um, lasting after effects because a few of those people in that comedy community have been pretty quiet about how COVID has negatively affected them going forward. I think I've heard Brendan, maybe, or maybe Brian Callen mention in passing how he still hasn't got his taste buds back or his sense of smell. And for a Brian Callen character, somebody who purports to be quite cultured and enjoys his wine and cheese and whatnot imagine just losing you know the capacity to really taste properly right and to really smell food like it, that must be debilitating if you're an actual foodie and you don't and you love going to restaurants and bars and stuff that must be horrible and again they don't want to say it because if they say it it's going to make them look bad right in one way because they've obviously had a very anti-lockdown anti-vaccination kind of stance about things and obviously they've done it more so so people can come out and buy tickets to attend their shows which is wild to me in that regard right that these all these comedians were doing everything under their power to fly around the world to do comedy comedy shows while the world is on fire that definitely is a um good representation of how people act in general <laughs> right? the world's on fire but let me get mine and then we can go back to paying attention and all that sort of stuff. It's just nutty. Um, to end, says Rogan returned from performing three shows last week in Florida, where um, where the state is reckoning with its largest or highest ever surge in virus infections, according to a New York Times database. Now, I don't like this sort of stuff, right? Because it says infections. It never says deaths. So I think sometimes the news can be a little bit um purposely misleading with this sort of stuff they never really talk about deaths they always talk about cases and hospitalizations but talk about death because people for sure get really sick and they get holed up in hospitals but sometimes you know if they're fortunate and the uh, medication and they're looked after pretty well they can leave right they can make a full recovery now maybe there are some long covid symptom consequences or reactions that you get held with over time no one's denying that but the idea that you know look at this number even as the case continues to rise with more than 50 15,600 people hospitalized with the virus across Florida. Um, Ron DeSantis has held firm on banning vaccines um, and mask mandates. Florida deaths are considerably higher than those in any other state in the country. Cool. But when you put that number, 15,600, you're making it seem as if these are the amount of people that are dying from COVID, which it clearly isn't happening, right? There's obviously a high number of cases, which is not good. High number of hospitalizations, which is not good because the beds are going to be full up. But I wish the news would be a little bit more fair and just talk about stuff a little bit more balanced and talk about the case and talk about the deaths more. Talk about the deaths in the same way you're talking about the cases. Just do that in, in general, because I think that will definitely help things. Um, but there's again, but there's no denying that people like Joe have uh, played an interesting role in how COVID has gone about over there in the US. And I think is there one more clip here concerning Joe? We want to talk about it. And I think that's it in it concerning the whole Joe thing. But yeah, um, what's the theory? What's to end it? To end it, I would say more like more than likely he's going to be one of those guys that probably gets over it really quickly. Right. I think he'll probably have it for a couple of weeks 
feel a bit shit and then he'll go back to normal i'm pretty sure this is joe rogan after all um he'll be completely fine he's got the great people around him guess he's had a new show will definitely help him out i'm sure he's had people behind the scenes reaching out and you know offering their assistance cool i'm sure that'll be okay and i think he'll probably double down on his position when he gets back on his podcast i don't think he's going to change his stance on how you know um the pandemic was dealt lockdowns um restrictions mask ban is i think he's still going to say that stuff i think he'll say oh what's the point of a mask if we're all going to get it anyway that kind of sort of stuff and in general we're still going to be in the same position where we are right now mess you know loads of really conflicting evidence loads of really conflicting bits of information people not really telling you the whole truth of the situation and you having to really make up your own decision for the betterment of your own family and friends basically that's where we're at basically isn't it we have all the information we need you have to basically pass through it and figure out what works best for you and your family that's it because if you try and listen to your leaders they're all leading you astray if you try and listen to people that you might look up to in media and entertainment they're all kind of self-serve self-serving in that regard so you really shouldn't listen to them because the reason why a lot of these entertainer guys are pro opening things up is because they want you to go to their shows and buy their tickets and pay for their merch and and show and see their specials let's be honest right they're not they don't want to reopen the world for the betterment of society um so if that if that's the case you really have to be selfish and really look at the data analyze it as best as you can and try and make a decision that best serves you you and your family that's it that's it all the other stuff is just complete noise because again the no the, the, the news especially is just horrendous when it comes to dealing with covid they have absolutely no agenda other than just generating outrage do you know what i mean nothing else and you don't want to listen to your crazy aunt on facebook because she's a crazy aunt on facebook so god bless you all that day especially for those people in america it sounds like it's a confusing place to be in terms of passing through all the good information but i'm sure there are resources out there that you can dig into that will definitely make it far more um easy of a situation to go through i'm hoping for you and i'm praying for you fingers crossed stay strong my friends stay strong